The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. For over 95 years, we've set the bar. Power, we restored it. Protection, we reinvented it. Record yields, we redefined it. If there's one thing we know at FS, it's that just because something hasn't been done, doesn't mean it can't be done. We're never satisfied unless we take your farming operation to the next level. Run your equipment at peak efficiency and bust the bins this season. Visit fssystem.com. Well, as we take a look at the market trade action we saw on Thursday, Soy Complex had a solid close on the day. Corn was quiet around unchanged. Wheat was uh, a little bit lower as well. Livestock had a good day, too. We have, of course, the heat and dryness across much of the Corn Belt that is a concern in this trade. It's one of the things that is driving trade action this week. We're going to talk about things. How did Thursday's trade wrap up? Big picture perspective. Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor with Total Farm Marketing, joining us here today on the program. Brian, always good to catch up with you, my friend. And I hope you are uh, doing your best to stay cool and uh, stay uh, stay in the AC as much as you can there in uh, Wisconsin, Brian. Yeah, we're struggling with like, like everybody else, just sort of that suffering heat in particular yesterday was just something else. And then it's hot again today, but there's some temperature relief in sight for us. Uh, in fact, you look out a little bit further and and uh, all of a sudden, uh, I think on the 30th, we got a 49 low and a 68 high or something like that. So mm -hmm. it'll change. But to your point, beans are supported again today. And when you look at that six to 10 day forecast, you know, you're right in that area where we got these good rains a couple of weeks ago and all of a sudden it goes dry. You want to get rain to finish this out and you got a below normal precipitation forecast on yesterday evening, six to 10 day outlook. Um, so there's just, you know, kind of this bias that the bean crop could be losing ground and, you know, with the tours going on. So that'll tell us something, but mm -hmm. I think some of the wording in the tour, at least that I've seen is like, well, you know, it's this, however, struggling with heat or struggling with dry. And so kind of leaving the door open that this might not be the, you know, the, the, things could be a little different with this weather than if we had more normal type weather. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. a good point there about, you know, with the tour, obviously that's a headline here in, in the market this week. And it, it feels like that, you know, maybe if that tour was next week after a, this heat and dryness, it might be a different picture. But to your point there, it, it feels like that variability, but overall, we might not know necessarily what we have out there in the field until it's in the bin at this point, Brian. Yeah, and in particular, uh, what I'm hearing from farmers is in areas that have remained somewhat dry and now their crop might drown right out a little faster on corn is the te test weight issues again. And, and those are things that, you know, don't really become evident right away. That'll take some time, but it, it might be one of those years where we get a yield number, uh, but there'll be adjustments six months, nine months, uh, a year down the road on quarterly stocks. And that is probably a, um, a higher likelihood than not. Let's, let's, I, mm -hmm. I just think that's where we're headed is where I think there's too much, yeah. too much scattered variability. When you look at not only the crop tour, but some of the other uh, seed company tours and other private tours. And then our conversations with farmers, just variability to the crop. And usually when you hear this much about variability, my experience has been is, is ultimately the crop has probably already peaked and that it's on its way down, but to where? Yeah, and I think that is going to be the big key. Where does this crop end up? And we have to balance this as well with the poor demand picture out there, Brian. I think that was evidence again on Thursday morning's export sales. We had an old crop cancellation of corn and just... You know, the export sales numbers, they're, they're nothing nothing amazing to write home about, Brian. They kind of fell off the cliff. And then in recent weeks or months, the, the rising dollar and uh, availability of Brazil generally at a cheaper price. Um, it's just been really challenging for U.S. corn. And, and, and you're connecting all the negative dots. You go back a couple of years ago, boy, we just had a lot of bullish dots that kind of were connected. Things happen with lower stocks, with this, with that, good exports, a weakening dollar. It's just the opposite right now. We can't get things that sort of align. And you know, part of that alignment on a daily, a weekly basis is is that export sales number. And, it, and it, so it's very visible to the market, Jesse. Mm -hmm. And when the market sees this visibility and looks at it, it just kind of goes, ugh. 
that being said, corn wasn't a train wreck today, you know, and, and two million or two, two, two cents down, two and a quarter down December. But, you know, this sort of dry weather heat, you might have thought, boy, this could be a kind of a punch, if nothing else, just a short cover punch back into the 510, 515 area on December corn. And so we're here, we're trading around 488, 490, give or take, you know, just barely hanging on off of the contract lows down at 473 and a half. Just, it just feels heavy right now, despite maybe this weather concern. Well, and to that end, Brian, on the corn market, I believe that, you know, we get to the end of August, early September, seasonality tends to tell us this is the time of year where we like to put in a harvest low in corn, isn't it? It, it is. So so there's research firms that do their homework on the season and when typically we, we bottom. And a lot of times in, in sort of bigger crop years, the market bottoms sooner than later because it's anticipating big crops. So the market yeah. has a tendency to be ahead of itself. But suffice it to say, late August, September, October, that's your window. That's, that's when things, you know, have a tendency to bottom. Um, you know, the sort of the sarcastic side of Brian Doherty says, well, we're getting close to low because the last thing farmers want now is a rally if, they, if they're thinking that they might be into some insurance <laughs> payments. So, so some have said, just let her go. And, uh, you know, we got a better chance of prices rallying back later. But uh, it, it, season, from a, from a perspective of time of year, the, what happens is the end user sees a crop coming and they just don't jump into it. The speculator doesn't jump into it. There isn't urgency. There isn't pain. And that's why the market has a tendency to kind of just keep drifting down in this environment. And that's really what we've done. And in fact, we talked about this for now working on eight or nine, maybe 10 months about the slippery slope of corn prices because of world so fundamentals. And other than with now with hindsight, the quick rallies we had that even disappeared quicker were dry weather related that forecast change, what, it, rain came and the markets just the, got the legs kicked out from under them. So it's still a bigger, uh, bigger long-term perspective problem. It is a, a bigger long-term perspective problem. I would agree there, Brian. And it's, it's tough to manage your risk in this environment a little bit. As you mentioned, you know, that we're getting to some of those insurance payment type levels here. And so that's something to think about. A lot of farmers saying, ah, just let it go, see what happens. I, I know it's, it can get difficult to, to manage your risk here, this time frame as we get ready for fall harvest, Brian. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, do you do a lot? Do you do nothing? There's no easy answers at these prices because you don't want to be an overseller anticipating it to go lower and then have it start to bounce up. On the other hand, you know, with hindsight, and I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but there were some better prices down the road. So hopefully you've got some things sold uh, or back down the road. Um, and, um, you know, as we look at that, the big picture perspective wants me to somewhat believe that we're we're positioned or destined to see uh, prices, um, you know, try and find a low, seasonal type low. I think farmer selling is going to be minimal here at these prices. And and really, unless you have nothing sold, you probably don't want to be selling corn down here, at least aggressively. But don't 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 take your eye off the beans. Uh, mm -hmm. Beans are still two dollars and 40 cents off the recent low and only about a big 50 cents off the recent high. As well, I know the stock market is uh, something we're keeping an eye on. Stocks under some pressure Thursday, that dollar rallying again. We got that Jackson Hole meeting coming up here this weekend and expecting some comments from Jerome Powell Friday. I, I know that's a, kind of an outside anecdote here to everything else going on in the grain markets and livestock too, Brian. It is. You have a lot of stuff, you know, shaking loose in the world and the war is escalating. I, it's from, to my thinking, you've just got a lot of uncertainty, a lot of tension with China. Uh, the idea that maybe interest rates have, have risen enough this year and then the, the Fed will kind of take a break from this. But we'll get all that information. Suffice it to say, it's going to cost more to store grain. That's bottom line out of all this. And borrowing money is going to cost more. So when I take a look at something like soybeans at where they're priced, I'm, I'm a little bit more inclined to be somewhat more uh, aggressive. 
We're having a conversation today with Brian Doherty of Total Farm Marketing. Brian, livestock had a pretty solid day on Thursday. I know we're uh, been waiting to see what cash cattle activity might look like. Heat, no doubt, impacting feedlots and hog uh, hog confinements, uh, hog operations here this week as well, Brian. Yeah, we were kind of wondering what when this thing would kind of pop because this kind of heat has been stifling their evaporation days. When I when I that's my term. That means we're just evaporating meat off the marketplace. And uh, we saw that today and some pretty hard, probably short covering on a market that looked a little iffy. So real, real glad to see this push higher in both live and feeders. Uh, hogs may be more of a follower. That market still has me befuddled why the board is at such a crazy discount to the cash. But the expectations are ample supply, a little bit less demand. And again, worries about economic conditions elsewhere in the world, particularly China. Yeah, very, very true. And seeing feedlot country, just a little bit of activity as of Thursday afternoon in Nebraska. Um, but one has to wonder how much might actually move there uh, on the cash side in cattle this week. It feels like Packers have have kind of, you know, they've run chain speeds ahead here to get uh, get ahead as much as they can. And then with the heat thrown in there, it, it just makes for an interesting dynamic, especially a week like this one, Brian. It does. We get a couple of these every year, usually one in winter where it's just horrible. And then one or two in summer where there's stifling heat, humidity and lack of weight gain. So it's not anything out of the ordinary in the bigger picture. But when it happens, expect that you're going to find good support. The key is whether or not, you know, it's been so hot in the in, in in parts of the country that you know is consumer demand on the you know consumers don't eat a lot when it's hot yeah. either so less they're eating indoors so the grilling season likely slowing down kids going back to college going back to school um i you know i i would watch this rally pretty carefully in cattle as one to treat defensively brian how about that dairy market any thoughts uh, anything you're seeing going on there this week yeah, and a lot of volatility and some some strength uh, because of the heavy rains that again pushed into California, got the market rolling, got a nice big uh, push to the top side in the September contract on a nice bullish triangle, and then posted a bearish key reversal, and then a little lower the next day, back up today. I don't know if it's in sympathy with the live cattle, but pushing everything above that eighteen dollar mark again, which is encouraging. Uh, cash cheese has been firming over time. Uh, off a little bit today in the um, in the barrels blocks up a little bit here. Butter is uh, still trading near its highest price for the year. So just you got a firm undertone. We talked about this before. And the same thing, you got heat in the Midwest taking its toll on uh, you know at least perceived milk production, if not actual milk production. Brian, great thoughts and insight as always. Anything final you want to leave us with here? Or reiterate today on the show. Just keep your eye on the ball here, um, especially in the soybean market. If you uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, uh, you know, give us a call. We'll we'll talk about it. And where can folks reach you, Brian? I know a lot of different ways to get in touch, phone or online, right? Correct. Eight hundred three three four nine seven seven nine is our phone number, and then on uh, online or email Brian with a Y at totalfarmmarketing dot com. Or check out our website, totalfarmmarketing.com. We've got a lot of good resources there. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us, sir. Have a great one, and we will talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Jesse. Have a great day. Thank you. That's going to do it for the show today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.